Uh, welcome everyone to today's Bite Size Talk. I'm very happy that with us today is James Fellows Yates from the Lightness HKI MPI EBA. And today he is talking about how to lead a community-based pipeline development team. So um, off to you. Thank you very much. So the reason why this uh, talk came about was I independently had two different questions or nudges from people um, asking sort of how I've done this in the past. Um, uh, I am running, I think, four or five different teams, or you've seen it in a few slides later. Uh, and people generally seem to think that I'm very good at running these teams, um, both from the NF core and also independently in other various community members. Um, which is basically what prompted me to put together my thoughts uh, into this bite size and might inspire some other people uh, to run systems in a, or teams in a similar way. So firstly, both thanks to Rika and Annabella for uh, inspiring this bite size talk. And also that a big, big thank you to the various teams. Uh, here, some of the people are listed here on my screen who are actively working some of these teams for the various pipelines. Um, but there's many more people also involved, but thank you also for uh, working with me and sort of, sort of going through this uh, as I make it on the spot, which is my next point, which I just want to emphasize that I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't have any training in management. Uh, I have just done what felt right and what seemed to be working for me. So this is all very opinionated, what I'm gonna be talking about, um, but I'm not saying that I make this up on the spot entirely. entirely. Uh, just as a bit of context, uh, I'm currently developing either in a main uh, sort of, a development role or maintainer role or assisting uh, eager tax profiler mag func scan and create text db all which have different team sizes spanning from a maximum of about eight uh, different people and um, that's within a team with most of the people in the institute i work at but then on average i'm working with about four three to four other people typically from different institutions um from around the world at different time zones and so on um working on this and both sort of in regular and irregular um, uh, uh, manner. So in the sense that sometimes some of these we have regular meetings once a week, others just people come in and out um, every now and then. So that's sort of the background where I've got gathered all of this experience from. And so the experience what I want to talk about is basically how to effectively run community derived team based pipeline development effectively. Uh, again, emphasis on people seem to think I do a good job. So that is what I'm basing this upon. And so from my thoughts, I've been able to sort of split this down into sort of six different main key points, uh, which are sharing, incentives, organization, discipline, documentation, and communication. Often these all do overlap in one way or another. Um, but uh, I sort of will split it up into sort of bite-sized chunks uh -huh, uh, uh, for the purposes of this talk. So firstly, I want to talk about sharing. And what I mean by this is when you start such a pipeline, particularly in NF Core, but in general, when you're working in open source, avoid going alone. It's often, unless you are in a very good permanent position with a lot of money and a lot of free time with no other responsibilities, it's going to be otherwise very, very, very hard. Um, and this is particularly if you are a sole bioinformatician in your lab. Um, having to develop a whole pipeline or such things can be very tricky. Uh, and if you are uh, having to also do a lot of analysis and stuff for everyone else in the lab at the same time. So it's always better to have people around you to help you out. Um, and before you start, try to identify people and stakeholders that may actually also benefit from, but also work with you uh, on a particular pipeline. So to take an example of NF4 Text Profiler, we actually have in the original sort of main team, we had three different sets of people all working on quite different things. One is people working in ancient DNA, ancient metagenomics like myself. Then we had people in Stockholm, including Lily, who I think is in the call, uh, working on clinical metagenomics. And then we had Moritz, who was working on consumer microbiome testing, so in a company. So three actually very, very different things. Um, but given that we all had the same sort of main aim or desire to over a pipeline we want to get out of core, we were able to work together quite nicely um, to make this, uh, this pipeline. Um, and the reason why this is important is because that means that your co-developers will have a good reason to use a pipeline. So often 
if you try and set this up before you start, you will find people who are actually motivated to use and actually run the pipeline in the end, rather than just people you pick up on the way who just want to help out, which may not be the best thing for sort of um, long-term sort of uh, stable development of the pipeline. I'm not saying we're going to ignore those people and come back to this later on, but when you're starting up, having a good core team is very helpful. Um, so yeah, these people have to have a reason to use the pipeline, invest in the pipeline, and this diversity is good because that also means um, you can all have your own little parts as well as working together for the same ultimate goal. And just to, to do a shout out to the new special interest groups we have in NFCore, that is often a very good place um, to find people who might be interested in helping with a particular pipeline. Um, and once you've sort of got this sort of initial core team, it doesn't have to stay static, but initial, initially, make sure you plan together to make sure everyone is motivated um, to get to continue working on the pipeline. So make sure everyone is having the, the tick boxes they need for their particular loo, uh, their group or analysis and things like that. And this is, a, again, a very good way of starting off when you start to develop these pipelines. Which moves me on to the next thing, which is incentives. Um, another important thing is when we're dealing with um, open source groups, we're not all employed to work specifically on that pipeline necessarily. Often people can do in their spare time or they only need to add their task by their group to only add, implement one particular part of the pipeline. Um, so to make sure you keep this, the development going on uh, over a longer period of time, keeping everyone happy, keeping sort of things ticking along, it's important to have different incentives to continue to work on this. So it's important to think of the ways we, where you can motivate people to keep contributing. So things that sort of, I normally consider when I'm running these groups, firstly, make sure that the functionality that each different people, that a person wants to use is there and make sure you facilitate a way of them adding this to the pipeline. So this is to help them with their actual day-to-day -day work. Think of publication ideas, particularly in academia. This is the main currency where you can convince people and particularly PIs or group leaders to actually contribute, um, to, to sort of invest time into developing or working in a, in a, in a pipeline. If you have an idea of like three or four different publications, then the PI will know well they, they can get something out of it because that contributor will have a publication. Uh, maybe even the PI's name can go on that paper and then sort of helps make funders and institutions happy and so on. But be creative with this is the important thing. Just a standard description of the paper is not the sole output you can have from this. Um, other things could be like writing protocol papers where you describe how to use this particular pipeline in this particular context, how to set it up, how to run it, and so on. Uh, and of course, things like logos, uh, because stickers, because why does people not want stickers? Swag is also always good. Um, and again, it gives people a sense of ownership about the thing because, you know, shine little thing, they stick and say, yeah, I worked on that, uh, is another good way of in incentivizing people to work on this stuff. So there's many different ways. Here are a few like basic things that I normally run. But this is a critical thing is think, how can you keep people coming back for more ultimately? Ah, yes, and also training. So if you can offer people training to um, help brush up on their Nexpo skills, actually train them how to contribute to Nexpo pipelines, that can also be a very good way of not only giving people incentive because they can say, look, I, I want to learn how to do Nextflow. At the same time as learning that, they also contribute to the pipeline. Um, so it extends functionality, fix bugs, extend it. But also this can be a good way of um, future inheritance planning. What I mean by this is identifying people who are very, very good, very motivated, help them get invo uh, involved in the main team of the, de of the development team of that particular pipeline. And then that means actually uh, in the long run, they may be able to replace you if you have to, for whatever reason, move on to a different position, you can't work on the pipeline. And then again, it keeps the longevity of time longer because then you have a new team lead to keep it, everything going on. Then we have organization. Um, this is one that I find is actually one of the most critical things for keeping these pipelines um, going on. This and the next uh, point, which is discipline. These two are very closely linked. So organization, what I mean by this is firstly, have regular meetings and ideally face to face. So not just sort of sitting on the Slack channel at the same time once a week or something like that. It's always much better to sit in it face to face not necessarily literally uh, in person, but sort of on Gather Town or on Zoom, doesn't matter what video platform, this actually makes uh, your connections with the different development teams stronger and you're more motivated to work together to people. We are humans ultimately, and we like that social, social interaction into, into the, in the most cases. Um, and in these meetings, it doesn't have to be extensive, it doesn't have to be super structured, 
But the way I normally run these is start with a very small catch up, maybe five to 10 minutes, just say, okay, what has people done since the last meeting? Have they found any bugs or anything like that? This allows people to keep up to date. Um, and then for the rest of the, with what's going on, make sure you've not identified any more structural issues. And then the rest of the meeting is mainly just there to actually develop. And this is critical because putting being able to put into your calendar an hour, two hours, however long you want, every time, every week, it means you always reserve time in your very busy schedule because of all your other work you're having to do for your actual job. Um, you keep this sort of block of time just for development sacred to you. So you do not have interruptions. You don't have like overlapping meetings and things like this. And it means that if you're all doing it together at the same time, you all get a very strong concerted effort to keep the pipeline maintained, adding new things and so on. To help with this, to make sure people on board, also sort of keep it on track, even between these meetings is to um, extensively use issues and project boards to keep track of everything that's going on. This is both useful for advanced people who do need to keep track of all the bug fixes coming, bug reports coming in, for example, and also newcomers to know, you know, um, what can I do to come in and, and contribute? So for NF Core in particular, having, um, um, like modules that you may want to add. Modules are quite small, very well documented how to add to the, the community and so on. If you have a list for newcomers of just modules that they can potentially add either to the end of modules repo or insert it into the pipeline, that is a nice, easy, again, bite-sized haha, um, task for them to do. So in both ways, you keep organized, people know what's going on, they see the activity, and also makes it easier for newcomers to come join in on the development team. Also think about the release strategy. This will, of course, depend on the project, um, but it also helps guide the, the development of the pipeline so people know what's going on. Even if you're in different places, you're not sitting together in the same room every single day. So what I mean by this is if you want to have a theme, so you know you could have like one pipeline where you want to add functionality for this particular type of analysis or data type, or you could go small but sweet. So release very, very regularly, but with very small uh, bite size. Uh -huh. uh, that's getting stale now. Um, releases with just very few sort of issues, but again, it shows the activity of the project is, is moving forward. And the more activity there is, the more that people will be attracted to come back and maintain, help develop the pipeline. Um, don't remember what I mean by that point, so I'll skip that one. And another thing is also try to meet up at conferences and hackathons when you can. Um, meeting up in person makes you uh, feel less like, you know, you're just a bunch of random robots or AI people sitting around. Um, you actually make them as friends, you know, and that the human connection is, is very important. So in addition to these regular meetings, if you can meet up at conferences, hackathons, the NF Core hackathons and next for summits are a very good place to do so, but also in sort of, you know, um, domain specific conferences, it's a very good way of, you know, building these relationships. And again, because generally everyone in NF Core, I have met a very, very friendly, very, very nice. You want to work with these people more, sometimes more than you in your in your own group. Um, and discipline. So this is the, the second sort of most critical thing, I think, with this. And which is where I found that in some cases, some pipelines have fallen over because of, of this issue. Um, by discipline, I mean make things very accessible, but uh, keep on top of things overall. So for example, keep PRs small for everyone's sake. Each, if each person are making a huge, massive, like 50 uh, file pull requests every time, the people in your team are not going to want to bother to actually, you know, uh, review that. And if it keeps happening, then they'll put people off and no one will contribute anymore. Um, because you have to remember, in many of these cases, for many of these pipelines, even if you have lots of volunteers, it is not our day job. We don't have, uh, most of us do not have loads of time to be able to invest in, you know, reviewing massive PRs or even writing PRs to a certain extent. Furthermore, by keeping these PRs atomic and small, when going back to the meeting, the having the regular meetings I mentioned in the previous slide, if it's small enough, often you can have your two hour meeting where you can get the bug fix done and reviewed all in that two hour meeting. And that feels very um, good to tick something off of your to-do list. So by keeping things small, you do it within the two hour meeting. It doesn't overspill into the rest of your time, get grumpy PIs and so on. Um, and like I said, keeping it small reduces the reviewing burden. Reviewing is one of the least favorite jobs of most people when you're working in, in software development and also in open source stuff. So the more you can do to restrict that uh, or make it easier, the better. Another thing is to stick to the regular meetings. 
you'll often have a lot of people who are will say, yeah, I can do, you know, Thursday afternoon at three o'clock every week. But um, many people are not reliable or have other sort of conflicting things that will get in the way. But if you as the core team um, stick to these regular meetings, that meeting is always very visible. Um, it will help keep people coming back because they know they can always jump in when they can. Um, it's not mandatory, obviously, to come to every single meeting. You yourselves, as the let's say the core core team, may have to um, drop out sometimes. But if there's always a few, like one or a few people there every single slot, um, so try and do this as much as possible. The, the more effective it will be, because when I, when it's more visible, it means that you can more easily attract newcomers. And as a general rule of thumb, I've tried to identify for each of my projects at least two co-leads or more, if better. And so there's always going to be one person, even if occasionally you have to drop out um, in these meetings that people couldn't develop. Sometimes it may feel a bit silly sitting on Gather Town completely alone for an hour or two, but occasionally that has actually worked to get new people uh, contributing to the pipelines, I felt. Um, and then again, talking about discipline and plus organization, Keep the issue boards up to date. Make sure you don't think things have gotten lost or left behind. Confusing people. Occasionally, I've had cases in quite a while ago now um, where people go and implement a module or like a functionality which is actually already in the pipeline, but they hadn't checked the issue board to see that it, it had already been done. Also, they hadn't, sorry, hadn't checked the uh, comments that it hadn't already been done because the issue was accidentally still open. Um, another critical thing is for. Uh, team leads is if you're a team lead and your team gets larger, do expect to do over time less development and more reviewing over time. This is a bit frustrating. Again, reviewing is one of the least uh, favorite things of many people, but um, it's a very critical one. It's one that, again, facil facilitates the development of the team um, over time. If people get reg uh, fast reviews, they're more likely to contribute. Um, uh, continuously over time um, and just don't get bitter about that uh, which I've noticed some people do um, and like I said because if you stay disciplined make sure you get the reviews in quick relatively quickly you'll keep people you'll retain more people in the development team um, documentation so this is why I'm actually in NF core and the NF core team is because I'm a bit of a fanatic about documenting things but it is very important and very, very useful in many different ways. So something I'm now implementing across all of my pipelines is actually writing a pipeline specific contribution workflow and also checklist. So there is a default checklist like with the, that comes with the PRs that you get in NF Core, um, but often they are rather generic and may not fit perfectly into the way that your pipeline is doing it. So for example, for NF, uh, for a tax profiler, and I'm really just my cursor, there you go. I have this specific checklist which describes everything you need to do to actually contribute a new taxonomic profiler to the particular, so a, a type of tool into the pipeline. So it's literally saying on this page, add something here. On this page, add something here. Don't forget to, you know, add the version mixing and multi QC mixing and things like this. This is good for you as a reminder when you're doing this yourself, but it's also very, very useful for newcomers. If you can basically hand handhold without literally handholding them through this process you it uh people will find it's an easy process to add such a thing and they'll come back and do it again as they, they want to do and it's also good for reviewers when you're reviewing it this yourself so you can make sure they've covered everything and also irregular contributors to more quickly reorientate themselves when they come back um to developing the pipeline and also by having such a checklist helps reduce uh, unexpected feature creep resulting in large prs um so when I was talking in the previous slide, two slides ago about keeping small PRs, if you have a checklist and a guide on exactly what you should do in a single PR, um, the better. It, the sort of this checklist can help re uh, prevent this from happening. Um, and finally, communication. Uh, one thing that has worked for me over time is to be loud and proud and overshare on Slack. Um, some people get a bit nervous about bothering people in these Slack channels. But uh, I don't think that is necessary. Um, by talking a lot on your channels, on your Slack channels, you get much more visibility. It shows more activity. And if your pipeline shows that there is a lot of development activity, people are more likely to come to you because they know their contribution is not going to be wasted or abandoned or something like this. 
So for example, what I am regularly doing is posting regular development updates. So often at the end of each meeting or at the beginning of each meeting, I'll say, I'm going to be working on this. Um, even if it's just me alone in Gather Town uh, or everyone I'm talking, or, or even if the whole development team is in, um, in the Gather Town instance, I will still basically describe who is doing what. So again, people, users, as well as other potential developers can see what's going on. This also allows input from others. So maybe people can't join the Gather Town team, uh, the Gather Town sort of meeting, whatever. Um, and again, I keep saying Gather Town, that's because my favorite platform. I hate Zoom, uh, but I mean any form of video conferencing thing. Um, it also allows other people to leave comments, even if they can't join the meeting itself. And don't be afraid to pester people. So what I mean is that sometimes people can be shy and we need to convince them that we are friendly. Uh, we're not scary, even if you know they may see you as an expert, an expert developer. We are all generally friendly, um, but sometimes you need to prod people to just to come actually speak up and, and speak out. Um, the reason why I say also pester people is sometimes people can only join spor sporadically. Uh, you know, irregular contributors who can only spend maybe like one afternoon every two months, and that is fine. But if you keep in touch with them, so pester them, it means that they'll feel connected, still feel connected to the project and more motivated to come back when, when they can. So don't sort of let them get dropped left by the wayside, um, but by pestering them, so going and checking up on them, if they start something, and even if the their development is slow, um, this is a good method of make, keeping this human connection so they feel a part of the project. Um, yes, another critical thing is use the larger public channels like Press Review and don't use as far as you can, secret or internal channels. So we have noticed in some cases, in some pipelines in the core team, that even though they, a, develop, a pipeline has a public channel, the developers have uh, their own private log channel somewhere and they talk amongst themselves, but it turns into an echo bubble. Um, and to the point where some of them don't even check anymore the public channel, which is really, really, really bad when it comes to bug fixing things like that. Um, so by using the public channels, whether that's your pipeline channel or even the, the sort of common channels like request review, it goes, shows activity, it shows um, openness uh, to development, and so people are willing to sort of maintain, help you to maintain the pipeline over time. And just to re reiterate, don't rely just on Slack, this face-to-face -face stuff, or even video calls, whatever, but more, you know, real-time communication is very important um, because we are ultimately still human. Um, so to summarize, Sharing, be open, don't go alone and be inclusive. Um, don't just hunker down into your own little bubble of your, your research group or group of bio petitions. If you start out by being open at the beginning, you're going to have a much better sort of um, stepping stone into having a long term uh, running pipeline. Make sure you have reasons for people to come back and to keep contributing. You can do it in many different ways, whether it's publications or merchandise or whatever. But keep these, keep coming up with ideas and sort of announcing these and making these publicly visible so it will attract people to come in. Make sure it's clear what is going on. Uh, if you come in to what looks like a shit show, sorry for the language, um, people will get scared off and run away. Uh, you yourselves will probably do that if you saw the same thing. So the more organized, the clearer who's doing what, um, what the next goals is or so on, the better. Make sure everything is regular. So disciplines, keep things clean, tidy, clear what's going on. And again, it makes it easier to onboard people and people to stay motivated, to keep contributing. Make sure you document stuff, make it easy for people to contribute by you know, writing these guidelines, um, writing these checklists uh, and things like that. So you don't have to be sort of be monitoring them all the time. And also communication. So face to face is better. Don't be shy to pester and nudge people. Um, Maybe you don't want to disturb people, but sometimes people need a reminder, and that's okay. Um, and yeah, and so that has basically been my experience of NF Core. That is what I have uh, developed in my sort of my head, my six points for running these development pipelines. Um, it's worked for me. It may work for you. I don't, if there's other people in the in the chat or in the in the Zoom call who have their own experiences, please um, shout out. Uh, but otherwise, I am open to questions. Thank you very much. So uh, anyone can now unmute themselves and ask uh, questions to James. If there are no questions from the audience, I actually have a question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you say you are um, main responsible developer for quite a few pipelines. 
how do you actually find time to be in all the meetings and write all those bullet point lists and stuff? So how do you organize yourself? By being organized. Uh, so I have in my calendar, uh, like two hours blocked off for Eager, two hours blocked off for Tax Profiler, two hours for Mag. By knowing that is when I'm working, um, it helps sort of organize these things. I consider like writing the documentation just part of the development there. So let's say Tax Profiler, um, I have Lily and Sophia uh, in particular who come very regularly, regularly to these meetings. So generally I can rely on them on keeping the code being integrated so I can do more of these uh, meta things. Um, so I just do it within those development hours basically, but because I have done this a few times now, it makes it easier. So it's less scary to do so, but again, repetition. So discipline, uh, it's a good way of doing it. But are you, is that basically your day job maintaining these pipelines? It's not meant to be, but I was good <laughs> at convincing my supervisor that it's worth it. So again, it's about incentive, convincing supervisor. So for example, I said, yes, I'm adopting another pipeline, but it's going to be critical to our workflow in the group. Um, and sort of with a good, a good amount of persuasion it is good. Like, you know, I also said it to her, like, it's not just me uh, doing this. There are other people I'm helping out. So it's not sort of going to all fall apart the second I leave or I get hit by a car or something like that. Um, yeah. Thank you. It's up to you how to manage your PI as well, to a certain extent. <laughs> well, not anyone can do that. Yeah, well, exactly. Not everybody can, but often there are, there are ways and there are ways. Uh, okay, then thank you so much. Uh, are there any more questions? This doesn't seem to be the case. Then uh, thank you, James, and thank, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening in. And um, I hope to see you all back on the 30th of July, where we have another bite-sized talk about NFT BAM, which is a plugin. So thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.